Hello, dear YouTube viewer. Welcome to this, my first lockdown concert. It's very lovely to have you watching. It feels live. It feels exciting. Didn't expect that. But it's not live. Well, I mean, it is live, but it's... I can't see you guys. So, a few things. One thing in particular, I've noticed on a few lockdown gigs, it's, there's that thing where there's no applause. It's, you don't know what to do. The, yeah. So my solution for that is um, at the end of each piece, so you can relax and pour out a glass of wine, I'm going to play this little... And then on with the show just to give a little punctuation, you see. Each of these concerts will feature a particular instrument, and today, as you can see, I'm holding a little four-string guitar. This is a tenor guitar. It's a beautiful little instrument, and I thought it'd be nice to restrict myself to the four strings for my first gig, a bit of musical discipline. So today, just the four strings, and I'm going to begin this little concert with page one of the very first suite by J.S. Bach, the very first cello suite. Page one, book one. This is actually, if you want to play an instrument tuned in fifths, which the tenor guitar is, this is a great piece to use as a study piece. It also happens to be one of the most beautiful pieces of music ever written. Welcome back to the show. I've got lots of guitars in the room with me. You can see a few of my um, musical family members. Very carefully chosen, actually. Um, it's a kind of symbiotic relationship between 
these instruments and, and me when I'm working in my studio. The tenor guitar is tuned the same as my cello here, C, G, D, A, from the bottom upwards. So tuned in fifths, like a member of the violin family, which the cello is. Next to that cello is a, a cello-built guitar. It's just a six-string uh, arch-top Hofner guitar. It's very similar to the guitar my dad used to play. My dad used to confuse me because he was always talking about these different kinds of guitar that fascinated me. But we only had a couple of six-string guitars in the house. So one was a plectrum guitar, as in a guitar that you play with a plectrum. Not to be confused with a plectrum guitar, which is a thing all in its own right, which has only got four strings. There you go. My dad told me that as well. So next to the archtop Hofner is a more conventional acoustic guitar, a steel strung guitar. That's a rather nice guitar by Tom Mates. Um, and then we have the banjos. Um, I suppose a bit of... Um, conjunctive symbiosis going on there as you can see they've kind of merged their their body shapes um, this banjo here is a, a G banjo it's got a little peg um, for the the higher string there which is a kind of throwback to a baroque device or well, probably it wasn't put there for that reason underneath that is a tenor banjo the large banjo there on the floor and that's tuned exactly the same as one of these and these tenor guitars probably came around uh, became popular in the early 20th century when tenor banjo players that were playing you know knocking out calls in jazz bands or music hall style playing um, they may have wanted a more woody sound so this kind of transference of body shapes and tunings carried on but the banjo you can you can turn most instruments into a banjo type instrument so there's a ukulele that becomes a banjo -lele. And you can even get mandolins with a banjo skin. They're called um, banjolins. You wouldn't want one of those on the end of your nose for a wart. They're not very pleasant things. But the banjo lily is perfectly fine. So these are all some of the confusing family things that my dad used to tell me about. And the tenor guitar is part of that kind of um, evolutionary confusion, really. It's a tenor banjo with a guitar body. But for me, it steps forward from most other stringed instruments because it's got this magical silvery sound, which I particularly love. I play it with a plectrum, which as a cellist, for me, is like using a bow. You have downstrokes and upstrokes with the bow and with the plectrum, and it's very satisfying to play. This tenor guitar was built by Ian Chisholm in Ditchling, Sussex, just over the downs from where... I'm standing now. I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue with two Bach gavots, this time from the sixth cello suite. Two pieces that Segovia played very often. Every time I saw him live, actually, which was a lot when I was a little kid, he seemed to play these two gavots after he told the audience not to cough or breathe. It was a cheery experience seeing Segovia. Two gavots.
pour yourself a glass of wine, have a little breather, do a little bit of dancing, jump over a plectrum. Praise Val Doonigan. It is Saturday night after all. So they were two bark gavots. I'm going to play a little bit more bark, but this time juxtaposed with a, a folk tune. Folk music is something which this little guitar loves to play as well. So check my tuning. I've got notes pinned all over the walls saying, remind people to sub subscribe to, shush, to subscribe to, um, to this YouTube channel. So please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and um, these uh, concerts uh, we're hoping to raise some money for the production cost for my forthcoming album. So you can make a donation on richarddurrant.com if you wish to do so. And there will be more of these concerts. So, slightly worrying that went off just then. Let's see what happens. So, folk music and Bach. I'm going to play a little Scottish tune now. Another track. Um, all the tracks so far have been from my String Henge album. String Henge, there's a double vinyl there. Another track from String Henge. This time, the Skyboat song, which is the first thing I ever played on this guitar after Ian finished it. Um, I started playing the Skyboat song, I've played it ever since. And that's going to um, seamlessly go into a couple of Bach minuets. Uh, please try and spot the join. <laughs>
Time for a breather. Hope you're enjoying this at home. Hope you've been out for your hour's walk today or whatever, out in the sunshine. Hope you're keeping safe and well. Excellent. Folk music. This instrument isn't always played in this tuning. A standard tuning, C, G, D, A, just like my cello and the tenor banjo. I've seen this played a lot in folk sessions, in pubs, and I've enjoyed going to a few sessions in my time. There are some great sessions in and around Brighton. And most folk musicians, if, they, if you see one of these in a folk club, it's usually tuned like an octave fiddle, so it'll be G, D, A, E. Um, I'm a bit of a purist, so I always stubbornly stick to this tuning. But whatever tuning you stick it into, the shapes are the same, and uh, you can kind of find your way around fairly easily, whichever one you happen to be handed. So I'm going to play a couple of tunes now which illustrate this side of the tenor guitar's personality. There's a kind of monophonic thing that you get with a plectrum, which is very satisfying. You've only got four strings, but because they're tuned in fifths, you can scamper about a little bit more easily than you can on a conventionally tuned guitar. The normal guitar, classical guitar, steel strung guitar, is tuned like a, a medieval knitting machine. This is tuned in kind of hard logic, fifths. So you get a whole handful of notes before you have to string cross. So it makes the plectrum behave differently. It works really well when you're playing in unison with a, a fiddle player or um, a whistle player. It's just got something about the sound. So I'll play a couple of tunes that I did actually learn in um, uh, the Brighton sessions that I used to go to. Um, first of all, Down in the Swamp, which is a Bella Fleck tune. I was taught this by a wonderful fiddle player called Ben Paley. Um, and um, another Brighton fiddle player and uh, multi-instrumentalist, my dear friend Nick Pinn, taught me the second tune, which is called Down no, it's not called Down in the Swamp, it's called Billy in the Low Ground. So I've played Down in the Swamp and then Billy in the Low Ground. And this is uh, a very different style of playing. <laughs> Thank you. 
to loosen up a bit. I think they're doing a tutorial for this dance. That's enough. I'm going to play one of my own pieces now on this tenor guitar. This is a piece that was inspired by a sculpture, a piece of art, a piece of artwork that that was erected on the spoil bank above a railway cutting on the Lewis to Wivels field section of the main line to Victoria. Now a spoil bank is all the earth that they dig out when they dig the railway cuttings. It's got to go somewhere and if they don't cart it off they just build it up so you get the spoil bank. And um, a famous typographer and artist who's now a daily dare to mention, I barely dare mention because he's a, a very controversial figure, but um, this Sussex artist decided to create a 30 foot high crucifix, Christ nailed to the cross, and he put this into footings on the spoil bank near Ditchling Common, and it, the Christ figure looked down into the railway cutting I don't know whether passengers on the trains that scuttled backwards and forwards were able to see the crucifix. He could be seen from a local church, um, but I don't know if those commuters were aware as they went past on the train, possibly not. Now this, this thing went up in 1919 at the end, after the end of the First World War. It was to commemorate the lives lost in the Great War. and. It was taken down in 1940. I'll tell you why in just a moment. But the, the kind of metaphors are rich with this particular crucifix. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the, about the music to give you some idea. There's in the key of B flat, ladies and gentlemen, that's two tadpoles. You get the theme of the, of the Christ figure. The ultimate kind of depiction of human suffering the crucifix and then the music changes and you can hear the train I imagine the people on the train the commuters being a little bit like Captain Mannering and, Mannering and Sergeant Wilson in their bowler hats on their way to the office perhaps oblivious to the iconic figure above that that cutting on the railway. In 1940 they had to take down the spoil bank cross as it had become known because um, with the air raids in the Second World War during the Blitz they realised that the Luftwaffe were using the crucifix as a way marker to navigate up towards London. And some of the wood was burnt Fragments remain. There are some fragments of the Christ figure in a cultural centre in, in northern New York. But it's largely forgotten. I did go hunting, actually. I walked the dog once and I found the footings of the, of the cross. They're still there, just a little brick construction that it was set into. The artist is known also for his typography. Um, his Gil Sons is on every computer software in the land. People choose that font if they want a simple, traditional looking font, traditional in the kind of London transport sense. His creations are wrapped around the main BBC buildings in Portland Road as well, his sculptures. But he remains a controversial figure who will probably be in prison were he alive today. I don't want to dwell on that. I want to dwell on the curiosity of this Christ figure on the embankment above the railway cutting. This is the Spoil Bank Cross for tenor guitar. By me. <laughs> Thank you. 
Slightly different dance. <sighs> I'm going to swap instrument now for my beautiful Ian Chisholm Uffington tenor. Hope you've been admiring the Uffington horse on the headstock there. Echoes of Stringhenge, the album, which you can stream on Spotify when this gig's over. Stay there. This is an exquisite little instrument. Basically, it's a ukulele. But it was built by the greatest living ukulele maker, Pete Howlett, who works in Wales. Deep in the mountains, you'll find his workshop creating these spiritual objects. This is what Pete refers to as a super tenor ukulele. And it's normally tuned like a uke, but uh, Pete and I spent a wonderful day in his workshop working out how to string it like a tenor guitar, because I've always wanted to be able to get my right hand fingernails on the notes of a tenor guitar CGDA. That, that is strictly flat picking and it's got its own character, which you're familiar with now. This thing, tuned exactly the same way. but with nylon strings, so that means I can play it with my, with my hands, which is lovely. So the last two pieces of this gig, I'm going to tune this thing. By the way, don't put your strap like this. I'm sorry, Pete, if you're watching. I, I didn't want to get my drill out and put a strap button on. It's stuck on hammer drill setting at the moment, so I thought it best not. I've only got a masonry bit as well. So this is the Super Tenor Ukulele. I'm, I'm going to play another one of my little pieces. This belongs in the same group of pieces as the Spoilbank Cross. It's inspired by Sussex. This piece is called At Burriton.
Matt Burriton played on the super tenor ukulele built by Pete Howlett. If you've enjoyed the show, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, as I said, you can go and uh, make, make a kind of virtual ticket donation on richarddurrant.com and you can sign up to the newsletter. Blah -de blah commercial break, over. But uh, it's wonderful to have support from uh, outside. Uh, so, uh, yeah, do those things. And if you want to learn to play these instruments, tenor guitar, ukulele, acoustic guitar and classical guitar, I have my own online academy called richarddurrantacademy.com and um, you can while away any spare moments you may have learning to play any of those instruments. I also do a regular Sunday morning slot. 12 o'clock on a Sunday I do a guitar meditation so I'll be playing uh, a piece tomorrow live at 12 o'clock. That's my regular Sunday um, guitar meditation. There's hundreds of films on the on the um, YouTube channel as well. So go and have a browse around. I'm going to play my last piece now. And I'm going to finish with a piece of Bach as I started. Uh, this is the Saraband from the third cello suite. Um, in closing, please stay safe, stay well, wherever you are. I hope you're okay. It will end at some point. Here in the UK, we haven't got a clue when that's gonna be. But um, let's hope that the future is bright. And let's hope one thing, let's hope the world is never the same again. That's what I'm hoping. It's a chance to change. Just a reminder, here's Mr. J.S. Bach.